Aloha Aina, Kalama Oka Aina Kiia with Aloha Aina. Just like you, I woke up this morning to this disturbing news that the Council for Native Hawaiian Advancement was going to be presenting uh, their governing document, not just to several Native Hawaiian organizations, but a lot of federal um, representatives as well. And this brought a lot of concern to me for several reasons. And I'm going to share a little bit more about the rule so you guys can understand it better and why it's so concerning to me. Now, the federal rule and its implications for our people, the most important thing to realize is that the two most important things is that there will be no land except for Ko'olawe. That means the 3.8 million acres of land that are currently uh, contested and in trust for our people under Crown lands are not going to be on the table. And those of us who know the American government know that they never negotiate up, they always negotiate down. In addition, it's been made very clear that federal programs for Native Americans, such as health care, gaming laws, and education, are also off the table. Page 35 says on this current final rule, uh, it's very important to realize that they're, they're, the form of ratification rules also changed. They now say that you can have a ratification vote first, which is what the original rules, proposed rule said, but they've also thrown in that you can have a document adopted by other means uh, and implemented by your government who has been stood up by who? Not exactly clear, but probably the Department of the Interior. And then the ratification vote would just measure the support of it. In other words, the government would be created first and it can move forward without our consent and participation. On page 49 to 50 of the final rule, which can be found online if you Google Native Hawaiian document DOI. On page 49 to 50, individuals may use sworn statements for self-certification or for sponsoring a close family relative for purposes of a referendum vote. In other words, the vote can happen, but there will be no regulation on who gets to use your name or the name of a loved one. This is completely consistent with how the Kanaio Luvala rules were created and how the Na'iyo Puni uh, rules were then rolled over and utilized to justify their uh, participation as well as federal monies and, uh, sorry, the OHA monies to pay for what, they're, what, they're, what they did behind lock gates. The next concerning part is on page 114, the Native Hawaiian governing entity members are subject to federal laws, state laws, and Native Hawaiian governing laws. Now, what this means is that there is no sovereign country, there is no Indian country over which we can determine our borders and we can determine the laws that which we can uh, define what is our government versus outside. Now, and except for, in, the, in cases, potentially the Department of Hawaiian Homelands or the Kaho'olawe. Now this is very important because sovereignty is, you're not supposed to impose your laws upon another, another, another group of people. And this makes very clear that that will happen. Now this goes in hand in hand with the almost supreme power that the Na'iya Puni Constitution grants to their head of state. Unlike most constitutions, with whose whole entire purpose is to create a check and balance system so that you don't, like you can avoid abuse, there are almost no checks and balances, and the head of state can pretty much change the constitution and the gov government structure at will unilaterally without consultation with the community. Now, what I think they're looking for at the Sheraton is to have the Na'iyao Puni Gated 88 be recognized as the government so that they can move forward with writing the rules of engagement. Supporters of this process have argued that Na'iyao Puni no longer exists, that something is better than nothing, and, and that although this process is flawed, it's the best that we can get. But what they have also shown consistently is that they will be top-down, exclusive, ensuring that these meetings lock out the vast majority of our people and we all have absolutely no scruples about continuing to utilize our people's names without consent or consideration. Now, the question is, are they able to stand a constitution up during this current CNA gathering at the Sheraton? Yes. Are they going to ratify it? Now, given the guidelines listed, my an analysis is most likely they won't be able to pull it together so quickly. Recognizing the government, yes, but the ratification, no. However, 
We can't predict what they're doing because they have consistently not reported to our people. They haven't informed us, they haven't educated us, and they've never gone out and reached a handout of, of uh, aloha and friendship to the rest of our people. The most frightening thing about this entire process is that given the rules described before, they absolutely could. Mahalo.